Welcome to the Steel Creek Explorer. I'm Jeremy Stout, and today, let's go find some beavers. Before we go out into Steel Creek Park and see if we can meet a real live beaver, uh, let's learn a little bit about uh, who and what beavers are. Uh, beavers are a really interesting and enigmatic animal of our region. They are native to this area. They uh, Names like our local Beaver Creek will, will give testament uh, to them being an important part of our, our local ecosystem uh, in history. Uh, but what's interesting is beavers were actually extirpated. They were locally extinct uh, throughout much of the lower 48 uh, until just uh, comparatively recently, just a, a few decades ago. Uh, in fact, right here in Bristol, the very first record of a beaver in modern times was the long ago year of 2008. Uh, that was the first confirmed beaver in Bristol in over a hundred years. Uh, so they have been making a comeback. They've been reclaiming a lot of their old territory where their habitat had previously been destroyed or they had been eradicated because uh, they were believed to be a nuisance. Uh, but they are coming back. And I want to try to make the case to you today that that is a good thing. Uh, so what are beavers? Uh, I, will, I will use my uh, friend Winona here. Uh, this is our taxidermy. It's going into a new exhibit in the Nature Center. Uh, beavers are actually members of the rodent family. Of course, they are mammals like we are. Uh, they've got uh, furry things, they're, they're vertebrates, they've got bones uh, inside them. But they are rodents, uh, and they're the largest rodent in North America. They're actually the second largest rodent in the whole world. Uh, the capybara of Central and South America is, is bigger than the beaver, but beavers can get huge. Uh, Winona here was, was a sub-adult. She wasn't even fully grown um, when, when we found her dead on the golf course. Um, beavers can get uh, close to 100 pounds in size. Uh, so that is a large rodent. Uh, they are aquatic. They live in the water. Uh, and they, a lot of people think that because they live in the water, they eat fish. They don't eat fish. Uh, they are herbivores. Uh, so if we look inside, let's take a look at the skull here. We'll get a pretty good look at what they eat. Uh, and this really shows their rodent affinities. Uh, the beaver skull looks very similar to just a gigantic rat skull, and that's uh, essentially what they are. Uh, they've got these large canines in the front uh, that are chisel-shaped for cutting wood, uh, just like we use chisels to, to cut wood ourselves. Uh, and then they have these flat molars in the back for processing uh, tough uh, plant material. Uh, so they actually uh, will, will chew down trees and eat other uh, vegetation that they find. Uh, they don't just build with trees. Uh, that's uh, another misconception. They actually eat parts of the trees. Uh, so here is a, a tree that some beavers had been chewing on uh, from right here in the park. Uh, you see the characteristic penciled uh, shape to both ends. Uh, that's the, the telltale sign that a beaver has been gnawing on the sides. And you actually see what's happened to the tree. They've not eaten most of the wood of the, that made up this tree. They've actually uh, chewed the bark off the outside. Uh, and beavers will eat a lot of plant material, but when they eat wood, what they're actually after uh, is, is mostly the inner bark. Uh, that's the most nutritious part of the tree, and that's the part that they're most uh, after if they're not building with the wood. So this is sometimes a fairly common sight uh, is this piece of tree that's totally denuded of bark. Uh, so that means that a beaver has actually snacked on this wood. Uh, but of course we know that beavers don't just eat wood, they do other things with it as well. Uh, beavers are engineers, and uh, in more ways than one. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, beavers build a couple of different structures. A lot of people see something a beaver has built and they automatically call it a beaver dam, but in fact that may not be the case. Uh, beavers build dams for the same reason we build dams. Uh, it's to hold back a body of water and create a pond or a lake. Uh, but they build a totally different structure called the lodge, and that's the thing that they actually live in. 
Uh, we don't have any active beaver dams on Steel Creek Park Lake because we already have a dam, the one that people built back in 1963. So the beavers have no need to build a dam if they already have a body of water. What we do have are three active lodges on Steel Creek Park Lake, the homes where the beavers live. So let's get out into the park and let's go see if we can see some signs where the beavers have been making their home in Steel Creek Park. We didn't have to travel very far at all to find what I was looking for. This is the reason many people don't have a fond feeling when they first think of beavers, uh, because this is what they do. Uh, this is a tree that's not been chewed on in a while, but you can see what's happened. The beavers have totally girdled the bark uh, completely from around the base, and they've taken a pretty significant divot. Uh, it's, it's a thousand wonders. This tree is even still standing. So beavers do chew down trees. Uh, and oftentimes we think of that as a destructive force. And if there are trees that you don't want to be chewed down, then rightfully so. I understand why you wouldn't think of that as a good thing. Um, but most trees, if you can believe it or not, actually uh, are, are not totally killed by the activities of beavers. So this tree right here appears to have died. But let me take you right down here and show you one that's actually got some important signs of life. Okay, I've got to be careful of the poison ivy patch that's growing right here, but take a look. This right here is an old oak tree stump. This one was chewed down by the beavers uh, not terribly recently. This is, you can see, the shell fungi growing on it. This is a stump that's been dead for some time. Oh, but I shouldn't say dead because look at what's happening. Uh, this oak tree, uh, even though the central trunk has been brought down and has died and was taken away, uh, it has actually sent out suckers right here. Uh, these right here are young oak trees that are coming up as clones from the parent tree. Uh, that's what beavers have a tendency to do. They bring down a tree that's a central trunk uh, and it tends to grow back bushier. So in reality, when you think about it, uh, beavers don't typically kill the trees that they chew down. What they have a tendency to do is turn trees into shrubs, which makes them a lot less destructive than a lot of folks first think. We've just pulled into uh, one of the many coves on Steel Creek Park Lake. This right here is a wonderful habitat, not just for beavers, but for lots of other species as well. Uh, here you can see one of the things that makes Steel Creek Park Lake so special, uh, and that is these uh, wooded slopes that come right down to the water's edge. Our lake is unique from a lot of our area lakes. Uh, that the levels don't fluctuate greatly over the course of a year. We don't lower or significantly drain our lakes in the wintertime like many of the um, uh, TVA regulated lakes do. Uh, our lake level stays roughly the same year round. And here on the Lake Ridge side of the lake, we're tucked back in this secluded hollow. It's away from human activity. There aren't trails close by. It's wonderful habitat for the American beaver. Here we are on one of the active beaver lodges right here on Steel Creek Park Lake. Uh, you might look at this and you might be tempted to just look right past it and think, oh, it's just a pile of sticks in the water. Uh, sometimes these can accumulate just by uh, runoff, you know, coming down the side of a hill, but not this one. Uh, it doesn't look like much more than just a random pile of sticks unless you know how and where to look. Uh, if you start to look closely, you realize that most of the sticks here uh, have these characteristic penciled ends on both ends. And of course, that should be the first clue uh, that these sticks were actually chewed down, uh, probably while they were alive, and then brought over and deliberately placed. Uh, so the Beaver Lodge is actually a pretty complex uh, network of a central room. 
Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to crash through their living room here or anything. They're pretty sturdy. Uh, they're made out of, uh, as you can see, just tens of thousands of sticks of varying size. They oftentimes will build a lodge around a central tree that's still growing and provides a basis of the support. Uh, and then they'll also pack in mud. Uh, to both anchor these sticks to the lodge, uh, but also provide some weatherproofing and some insulation uh, from the elements. Uh, so uh, if we wanted to, to see if anybody was home, of course, as we mentioned, beavers are nocturnal, so we're not likely to see any out today. Um, but we couldn't just knock on the front door and see if they could open it for us. I'd actually have to jump in the lake to go visit the front door because their entrance uh, is actually underneath the beaver lodge. Uh, they access the rooms that they, they build inside here from underneath the lake. Uh, and this is really fascinating. Of course, it's summertime right now. Uh, but what's really interesting is in the winter time, beavers uh, can actually become trapped inside their lodges and inside their, their lakes that they live um, when the water freezes over. Uh, because their entrance is underneath the water, uh, sometimes the only opportunity beavers have for air uh, is the air that's inside the lodge that's above the water level. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, leave some cameras here and see if we can catch some of their nocturnal activities tonight. Before we leave, one thing I want to point out is uh, one of the many ways that beavers are important in the environment. Uh, and we're going to talk more about this in a minute. Beavers are ecosystem engineers. They're one of the few species that actually create habitat, not only for themselves, uh, but for other organisms as well. Uh, this plant is a very common plant in our area, but this is spotted jewelweed. Uh, this is one of the touch-me-nots. Um, and these plants, uh, even though they can be found in a lot of different places, uh, they're very commonly found in wetland habitats. And so here, a place where beavers have built up artificial shoreline, complete with sticks and mud, uh, this is a great place for this jewelweed to survive and thrive as well. So it's not just beavers. Uh, every, lots of things uh, benefit from the activities of beavers. Well, we've set a few camera traps to see if we can get the beavers uh, and their activities overnight. Now we've moved over to another spot on the lake shore uh, to try to find evidence that the beavers have been leaving behind as well. Uh, we haven't made it that far yet, but we have found some more of this jewelweed. Uh, this is that plant that I showed you. We found it actually growing out of the beaver lodge. And this one's neat because this one's blooming. Uh, and this is a beautiful little native plant. We've got two species of jewelweed that occur in the park. Uh, this one with the orange flowers is known as spotted jewelweed or spotted touch-me-nots. Uh, you might know these later in the summer and in the fall. Uh, they get a seed pot on them that when you touch them, they explode and throw the seeds uh, lots of directions. Neat plant. We found this on the beaver lodge and here we find it uh, growing at the water's edge uh, elsewhere. Before we check our camera traps that we set last night on the active lodges uh, that we visited, uh, let's go back and look at some of the first beaver records in modern history here in Bristol. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the first time beavers were, were confirmed uh, and reported in Bristol in, in nearly 100 years or maybe more was over at White Top Creek Park. That's that big city park near the Speedway out on Highway 394. Uh, beavers first showed up there in 2008, uh, and they made a big impact. Uh, the first thing they did, of course, there's not there's a pond there, but there's not a lake like we have here at the park. And the pond that's there doesn't have a lot of trees that grow around it. But there is a creek uh, that runs through behind that pond, and the beavers promptly set up shop and started felling trees, uh, and they established a really impressive dam. Uh, and that dam ended up creating a pond that was several acres in size. Well, the beavers multiplied. They did very well at White Top Creek Park. Uh, but as beavers do, they eventually uh, exploited the, the food resources that were there, and they abandoned that site. Some of them undoubtedly went downstream, but we suspect at least a few of them went upstream because the very next year, 
in 2009 and 2010, we started to find the first evidence of beavers in Steel Creek Park. Uh, and these are the first records of beavers in Steel Creek Park ever. Uh, and so here they didn't have to build a dam because as I mentioned, they already found a lake with forested edges, uh, as we learned earlier in the episode. Uh, so they didn't need to build a dam. They started just cutting down trees for their own consumption. Uh, and they started to build an active lodge that they actually lived in, um, spent their winters in, and spent their days in uh, when they weren't coming out at night to, to feast on more trees. Uh, let's go back and see what our camera traps found from last night. Just as we expected, we got a handful of beaver activity, even when they're not uh, actively building a new lodge. Uh, they're still walking around the outside of the lodge at night. You can see them repairing maybe some damage that occurred. Shoot, I hate to say it, maybe they're repairing the spots where I stepped and walked on it yesterday. Uh, who knows? Uh, but you can see this was uh, taken with our trail camera we use here at the park. It, it's got an infrared flash, uh, so the flash is invisible to the animals. Uh, makes everything look uh, black and white or looks sort of washed out in places. Uh, but that's a pretty normal series of shots for some nocturnal creatures. Too cool. Well, thank you for traveling with me to the park to find some evidence of some of our most elusive park creatures, uh, but some of the, the largest aquatic mammals that we have in our region. Uh, of course, we didn't expect to find any live beavers during the daytime, but we did find evidence uh, of their activities in the night. So beavers are fascinating creatures, and they've got a rich history with our own species, with human beings. Uh, beavers have been an important fur-bearing mammal for a long time. Uh, this right here was a, a common preparation of a beaver hide uh, in the hat-making industry. Uh, because beavers have these wonderful adaptations for living in cold water and in cold climates, uh, they have these very insulating fur and, and skins. Uh, so they've been an important economic uh, species for us humans, but their value goes far beyond their value as a pelt. Uh, beavers, as I mentioned earlier, are, are actually ecosystem engineers. And that is exactly what it sounds like. They create habitat, not only for themselves, but for other species as well. Beavers will find small, narrow creeks, uh, sometimes in, in narrow creeks and mountain valleys. They'll cut a few trees and they'll dam that. It creates a pond. The beavers uh, eat the trees that were growing in a forested valley, uh, but eventually the beavers will over-harvest that area. They'll move on. Uh, what happens is eventually the dam fails where you had forest, you now have a blank space, a new canvas for growth. Uh, this was a, a very important habitat in historical times. The succession that occurred after beavers dammed and then left an area is incredibly important for lots of other wildlife. Many of our native grasses uh, grow associated with old beaver activities. Uh, the prothonotary warbler is a rare breeding species in our area uh, that prefers to nest in the habitat around old beaver ponds. Lots of other plants and animals depend on beavers for their livelihoods. Uh, so beavers are a wonderful species. and As we also saw, they don't create a lot of the problems uh, that, they've, that have been attributed to them over the years. Yeah, they can make a nuisance of themselves. Uh, but their benefits far outweigh their costs. So whether you're coming to Steel Creek Park to try to find evidence of the beavers that live here or anything else, be sure to come out because this is where you can be the explorer. <laughs>